Float like a butterfly, sing like a bee. This is our story of Muhammad Ali. Cassius Marcellus Clay Jr., the son of Cassius Clay Sr. and Odessa Clay, was born on January 17, 1942, in Louisville, Kentucky. When Clay was 12 years old, his bike was stolen. Clay went to the police and told him he was going to beat up the people who stole his bike. A police officer by the name of Joe E. Martin got the future heavyweight champion of boxing into the sport by stating that if you are going to beat someone up, you will need to know how to do it properly. As an amateur fighter, Cassius Clay won two Golden Glove titles and the light heavyweight gold medal in 1960 Summer Olympics. Clay's amateur record was 100 wins with 5 losses. After the Olympics, Clay turned professional and quickly built a reputation as one of the best young fighters in the sport. After four years of fighting many opponents, Clay finally got his chance to fight Sonny Liston for the heavyweight title in 1964. It was a grueling fight that ended when Liston failed to answer the bell in the seventh round, making Clay the youngest heavyweight champion in boxing history. In 1967, during the heart of the Vietnam War, Muhammad Ali refused to become a soldier, stating that war is against the religious teachings of the Quran. He explained, why should they ask me to put on a uniform and go 10,000 miles from home and drop bombs and bullets on brown people in Vietnam, while so-called Negro people in Louisville are treated like dogs and denied simple human rights. For refusing to serve in the United States Army, Muhammad Ali was stripped of his heavyweight champion belt and suspended from boxing. Four years later, Muhammad Ali was granted permission to fight again. In 1971, he fought what is known as the fight of the century against the champion Joe Frazier. The fight ended in a 15th round decision when Joe knocked down Ali, convincing the judges to give the win to Frazier. It was Ali's first loss in his professional career. After the loss, Ali was more determined than ever to regain his heavyweight belt. In 1974, he would get his chance in what was known as the Rumble in the Jungle. Ali fought against the hard-hitting champion George Foreman. During the bout, Ali employed an unexpected strategy. Leading up to the fight, he had declared he was going to dance and use his speed to keep away from Foreman and outbox him. However, in the first round, Ali had it stripped by the champion and began scoring with a right hand, clearly surprising Foreman. Ali caught Foreman nine times in the first round with his techniques but failed to knock him out. He then decided to take advantage of the young champion's weakness, stamina. Foreman had won 37 of his 40 bouts by knockout, mostly within three rounds. Eight of his previous bouts didn't go past the second round. Ali saw an opportunity to outlast Foreman and capitalize on it. By the end of the seventh round, Foreman was exhausted. In the eighth round, Ali dropped Foreman with a combination at centering, and Foreman failed to make the count. Against the odds, Ali had regained the title. Even though Ali will always be best known as one of the greatest boxers in history, he should also be remembered for his leadership and humanitarian efforts. Since retirement, Ali has made goodwill missions to Afghanistan and North Korea, delivered sorely needed medical supplies to Cuba, and traveled to Iraq and secured the release of 15 United States hostages during the first Gulf War. Ali has lent his name and presence to hunger and poverty relief, supporting education efforts of all kinds, promoting adoption and encouraging people to respect and better understand one another. It is estimated that he has helped to provide more than 22 million meals to feed the hunger.